What's up? My name is Anna. I am an ICU travel nurse and first year SRNA. I worked full time through nursing school and these are some of the study tips and tricks that I wished that I had known when I was a nursing student that are backed by science. I'm going to go ahead and dive right into it. The first tip that I have is that you need to make a plan. So whether this is writing down in a physical planner or using an app like Trello, ClickUp, Monday.com, you need to be able to make a plan and know what your schedule is going to look like for the upcoming semester and for the upcoming week. Also, before you go to sleep at night, you need to sit there and you need to go ahead and write down what you need to get done the following day. The second tip that I have is that you need to do the hardest task first. I heard growing up that this was like, oh, you need to like eat the frog. I don't know where that saying comes from. It might be weird, but like it, the kind of principle applies. Go ahead and do the hardest thing on your to-do list first thing in the morning, and then you're not dreading it and like putting it off all day long. The third tip that I have is that you need to understand that assignments require different things and you need to be able to categorize them in your mind. So for example, a large paper that you are writing is different from needing to memorize all of the musculoskeletal system in anatomy and physiology. They're two different types of tasks, right? So for A and P, what you need to do is incorporate a memorization approach. For a paper, what you need to do is just spend time getting the project done. And those two things are in your mind are going to require different amounts of time. A project is going to require less mental brain power than memorizing something. So you need to be able to understand what type of task is different from the other and how to approach each one so that you're going to be able to use your time in the most effective way. A little quick story about how a lot of times nursing students are not very effective with their time. Many nursing students are like anxious, they're people pleasers, they really wanna do a really good job. And so they'll sit there and they'll read through the whole textbook, they'll highlight the whole textbook, they'll make these extensive study guides that are 25 pages long and they they are not good at spaced repetition learning and they're not good at utilizing like science-based methods to like retain information in the most time effective way. So if you're finding yourself in a place where you are highlighting an entire chapter of a textbook or you're just like re-watching the slides over and over again and you're highlighting exactly what the professor is saying on the slides, you need to incorporate some of the tips that I'm about to talk about that are coming up next about how to just really be the most effective with your time as possible. The next tip is the the Pomodoro method. The Pomodoro method basically is utilizing 25 minutes on focused with no breaks and then five minutes off. And in those 25 minutes, you need to turn off all distractions, no computer, no iPad, no phone. You need to be able to focus exclusively on the task at hand. And at the end of those 25 minutes, you have to put it down. You are not going to continue to just work on it for a few more minutes, put it down, walk away, take a sip of water, take a break for five minutes and then dive back into it. The research method also says after after your first four Pomodoro sessions that you need to take a longer break, like 30 minutes, go outside, take a walk, get a coffee, whatever, to kind of revamp. So you will find that you are wasting a lot of time once you start utilizing the Pomodoro method because you will see that you are utilizing time scrolling on your phone or that you're kind of zoned out or that you're not really focused on the task, but your brain can acknowledge a 25 minute increment and it can power through a 25 minute increment. And then you'll find that what you can do in two hours of the Pomodoro method was taking you six hours beforehand. So that is a huge tip that I have. And it's also backed by science about a way that we are able to effectively study and effectively get our tasks done. The next tip that I have is you need to incorporate movement. It doesn't have to be like CrossFit. It doesn't have to be like mountain biking or a solid core class, whatever movement you like, 30 minutes of a walk, you know, maybe it's a dance class that you like to do. Maybe it's martial arts, whatever. You need to just move for like 30 minutes a day. And for me, I also find that either working out first thing in the morning helps me to focus more or like halfway through the day when I'm getting really antsy and I like really can't focus. There's also some studies on people who do have ADHD and the ability to be able to focus on school is very much complimentary if you are also doing like a fair amount of cardio. I can link it down below the study about like ADHD and working out and cardio, but it's really helpful for people to be able to study. The next tip that I have is about this study that was done in the 1800s. Ebbinghaus. And of course, things have changed since the 1800s, right? However, some of the principles still apply. It's called and it's based on the forgetting curve. The forgetting curve is this principle that you forget 90% of what you heard in lecture within 24 hours. How can you mitigate that? The forgetting curve is mitigated by this Ebbinghaus like study by having somebody 
brain dump everything that they remember from the lecture right after the lecture and then brain dumping and writing it all out again 24 hours after 48 hours after and 72 hours after if the person brain dumped those four times and wrote notes about what they remembered from the lecture they're able to retain 80 percent of what they learned versus forgetting 90 percent <laughs> of what they learned and for me personally i'd rather not like waste time and it's a lot easier to review content that i heard in lecture than it is to go back and study the whole material over again yourself the next and like final big science-based tip is called the lightner system you've probably heard of anki or quizlet and it's basically spaced repetition learning so when you're doing spaced repetition learning what you're forcing your brain to do is to create those like neuronal pathways by recalling things at greater spaced intervals out if we remember what we just talked about with the forgetting curve if you just heard a lecture and then you have a text test the next day if you didn't do anything to try to like cement that in your brain you're gonna forget most of it right so with the Leitner system or Anki Quizlet what you're doing is you're taking information and you are spacing it out over greater and greater periods of time once you actually have memorized the system the Leitner system boiled down and kind of simplified for use as a student is telling you to break like five different groups of flashcards and the first box of flashcards is all new material and when you start to get the new material right it goes into box number two box number two you repeat every other day and then when you get everything right in the every other day box you go it goes to box number three which you repeat once a week if you ever get any of the cards wrong they go back to box number one which is what you're doing with flashcards every single day so box number one is every day box number two is every other day box number three is every week box number four is every other week and then box number five is finished slash I know slash review before the test there are programs that can do this and help you so like Anki and Quizlet can be set up so that you are doing that spaced repetition learning from when you have to memorize like large amounts of material. The one thing I'll say about Anki is that if you are sharing the decks with other people and you're not making the cards yourself, you're less likely to remember them. And I think there's also value in like having physical flashcards as well. So honestly, I would do both. What I would do is make a Quizlet set and, or an Anki set. But when I was in nursing school, it was Quizlet, not Anki. I know I'm old. Anyway, what I would do is I would make my own Quizlet set and every time that I made a flashcard to go in the Quizlet, I would also make a physical paper flashcard. And I would find myself utilizing Quizlet when I was at work and I had like access to a work computer and I could be on some technology. Versus flashcards, I also found how like physical paper flashcards I think have value as well because you are not distracted by being on technology. So you can completely turn off all of your electronics and just be going through your paper flashcards. Also, it is important to remember that if you're utilizing something like Quizlet in Anki and you didn't make the flashcards yourself, you are less likely to retain that information. So boil down all of this together, we can use scientific tips to help us be more effective with our time management. And as a nursing student, I know that you guys are busy <laughs> and you don't want to spend all of this time studying and that time could be utilized doing other things, working on side projects, working in the hospital, all of that stuff. So I really encourage you to utilize these tips to understand the difference between a project and memorization. If it's a project, you just use the Pomodoro method and you plow through it. But if it's a memorization, you need to use spaced repetition to really understand what you're doing. I will also add as a final tip that if you can talk out loud and teach a concept, that is another really great way to submit something into your mind. So yeah, in conclusion, you do your spaced repetition learning, you use your Pomodoro method, you use your breaks and you get outside and you use some movement and you articulate what you learned by talking out loud through it. I think that this, this is what really helped me to be able to work full-time and go to nursing school full-time and please comment what you would like for me to talk about next time please subscribe i'm really excited to do this longer form educational content with y'all here on youtube thanks bye <laughs>